Well, it's been a long time since I posted a video. A lot has changed. So I thought I'd get back into the swing by posting another video of my man cave. A lot has changed in my man cave, most uh, significantly the state that it's in. Uh, we've moved from Ohio to Indiana. So I thought um, I've been a, it's been about a year here since we moved. So I thought I would post an updated video showing off my man cave and diecast collection as we've set things up here. I've been enjoying a lot of people's videos on their diecast collections, modeling, and their man caves. So I thought I would post mine in hopes that someone could get uh, a little enjoyment out of out of what I've done here. So we'll do a walkthrough tour here uh, and review the diecast collection and modeling. Uh, similar to our old place and my old man cave, I've got kind of a storage workshop side. This new house has a much bigger basement and I've really enjoyed setting up here. The storage side is kind of a mess right now. We're in winter storage mode so there's a lot of extra stuff down here that's normally upstairs or outside. But in the back here I've got a workshop area that's much bigger than what I had and uh, I've been really enjoying it back here. I've got my gun safe and ammo storage, uh, a little work bench here um, where I do uh, any number of projects in the in the winter time uh, when I'm modeling I'm set up here with a little television so I can keep myself entertained as I'm working on models. Uh, this is the next one on tap. I'm going to do an old Fireball Roberts 57 Ford. Over here, just a little extra storage for some die cast that isn't on display. A uh, little paint booth set up here for my modeling. Furnace and hot water, all the mechanicals are down here. Again, kind of a mess uh, in storage mode for the winter. The finish side, uh, again, much bigger than I had before. So we'll just kind of do a walk through here and show you what we have happening. Uh, this winter I did a couple of ship models. I've never done any ship modeling before uh, but my wife for Christmas bought me a model of my father's ship that he served on in World War II. Uh, he was on the LSM 148 in uh, the Pacific. Their main mission was uh, working uh, toward the liberation of the Philippines so did several amphibious landings so built this model ship. First ship I'd ever built. Definitely a different deal than building car models, uh, but I had a lot of fun with it and I think it came out okay. I have it on display here in a display case. It was kind of tough to track down a display case this thing would fit in, but I did manage to find something. Got it on display with a Navy Challenge coin and the ribbon bar that the ship and its crew earned. Uh, also displayed my father's flag from his funeral and a couple other mementos of his time in uh, World War II. And then above it I built a 1 700th scale replica of the ship that my brother was on. I have an older brother that served in the Navy during the Vietnam War. Uh, he was on a guided missile destroyer, the USS Berkeley. So these model kits are hard to find, but I did track one down uh, and, and built that. I have it on display here with my father's ship. Uh, if you watched my last Man Cave video, a lot of this die cast is going to be familiar. Uh, I've got on display here the 164th Muscle Machines flag cars, all of them that I could find anyway. I think that's about all of them. And then below that, some other flag patriotic scheme uh, 164th cars that I found. And then I continued down with other flag and patriotic themed race cars. Uh, uh, military themed uh, race cars in 164th. Got the VW drag buses there that they did with the addition of the Marine Corps one uh, that somebody did some custom decals for and I put together. This case is a uh, kind of a hodgepodge of different themes that uh, were difficult to display on their own. At the bottom I've got uh, firearm themed race cars for Smith and Wesson and then to Remington, the old Rick Mast cars. 
Then above that, I've got a row representing the three seven-time champions, Petty, Earnhardt, Johnson. And then above that, some more Earnhardt Jr. and uh, his more one of his more recent rides, and then a couple of Earnhardt cars. And then uh, got uh, Keselowski throwback scheme there. And then currently, my favorite driver to watch is Ryan Blaney. I have kind of a shirt tail friend of a friend married to a member of the family kind of relationship to the Blaney's so I've always been a Blaney fan you'll see that theme throughout the tour here so Ryan's uh, represented here in my collection and then just some other cars that I kind of like um, some anniversary cars actually the the gentleman that ran the crew that moved us from uh, Ohio to Indiana gave me these two anniversary cars I thought that was a very thoughtful gesture he moved my diecast collection with much care and he himself was a big diecast collector so he donated these to the cause I thought that was really thoughtful so those are on display there uh, and then some coke 600 cars that I've always liked above that I've got a little replica of a Goodyear tire signed by Ryan Blaney a couple of haulers that go with uh, a couple of the cars that are on display here and then a replica of Ryan Blaney's uh, Pocono winning uh, race helmet We'll scoot around here to a little desk area I have set up. It's not very often I work from home, but when I do, it's nice to have a quiet area away from the animals where I can work. So I do have a little desk set up here with a printer. My wife just bought me this Mustang lamp for our anniversary, which, uh, which I love. So that's there on my desk. Above that, I have a little display that I put together as I was building these model kits of my dad's ships. I was in contact with my brother that was on that uh, ship in Vietnam and we got to chatting a little bit and through our discussions he gave me the idea to put together a little display that commemorates our whole family's military contributions. So in this uh, shadow box are the branches of the military that our immediate family has served in over the years and challenge coins that represent uh, what each uh, each member of the family did, whether it might be the ship they were on or the base they were at or something related to what they did in the military. So uh, I did two of these and sent one to him. It was a nice surprise for him and I really enjoy having it hanging here in my man cave. Next to that I have a small smattering of the patriotic this, uh, patriotic paint schemes of various styles of race cars and some patriotic helmets uh, that I've put together. Um, I, I'm just a sucker for the flag and patriotic paint schemes. Over here, a couple of plaques from various driving experiences that I've uh, been fortunate enough to do over the years. We'll spin around to this large display. I made the decision when I moved into this house that I was going to put some effort into the display. At the old man cave, I just had stuff stacked on whatever cheap bookshelves I could find or bought at Walmart or yard sales or whatever. So. I put some thought and research into shelves that would work and how I wanted this stuff to be displayed and this is kind of what I came up with. These black shelves are from Ikea. Man, it took forever for them to get here but I really like the way they came out. So we'll kind of go through what's displayed here. Start at the top over here. We've got just some uh, beer themed uh, die cast displays. I'm a big Schrader fan and Kenny Wallace so they're Budweiser and Red Dog and then Above that, Rusty's MGD and Davy Allison's Miller paint scheme. And then we come down to uh, Earnhardt Sr. and Jr.'s Coke paint schemes from the Japan race in 98, I think it was. I've always loved those paint schemes and the father and son first race together thing, so got that on display. Uh, Blaney, the Blaney family will make another appearance here. These are Dave Blaney's, uh, or an assortment anyway, of Dave Blaney's cars that he ran through his years in NASCAR from his early time all the way through uh, his career and then a couple of Blaney haulers and then a couple other haulers that I like and then I get down to a little smattering here of oil company collection I had a huge oil company collection at one time been in the lubrication industry for years uh, this this is kinda of what it's boiled down to some of my favorites that I never wanted to let go as I downsized that collection and then a little Budweiser racing display here on the on the right, some some uh, representing some Dale Earnhardt Jr. stuff uh, in the middle of a bottle that my uh, 
stepdaughter got me for Christmas one year, and then some other uh, Earnhardt, or I'm sorry, some other Budweiser stuff uh, from Schrader through Ricky Craven all the way up to uh, uh, Kevin Harvick. I'm going to kind of skip the middle here and come back to it. On the other side, I've got some dirt stuff, really kind of more of a dirt van than anything else. Um, at the top, I've got some Miller helmets there. Uh, we'll pick up that theme again as we get lower. Uh, and then I've got a Brett Hearn hauler uh, and uh, modified to go with it. And then the 116th Brett Hearn Budweiser modified. And then his 124th uh, Page Transportation modified. And then we get into this portion here of dirt cars. You know, some cars are in my collection because I like the sponsors or like the drivers. Some are in because they remind me of experiences I've had enjoying motorsports over the years. And this collection is a pretty good uh, example of that. These top three are, uh, you know, when the World of Outlaws got bought here a while back, um, you know, they really put a lot of money into the marketing thing. And they bought up the late model series and the sprint car series, and they put out this late model here uh, with their logos all over it and my brother and I both thought those were kind of neat so we kind of built on that theme and I did some custom die cast I did a sprint car to match it and then a pit wagon in the middle there uh, made made a set of these for uh, my brother that collected a lot and uh, myself and uh, this set really reminds me of the times I spent with he and his wife out uh, chasing chasing the world of outlaws um, Makes me think of him every time I look at these. Uh, down below, we've got a couple of late models here. Steve Francis. Uh, everybody that's a late model fan would know who Steve Francis is. And then uh, a guy that ran locally near my home where I grew up watching racing. Uh, a guy named Dick Barton. He was a local hero. Very fast. Uh, really owned the local scene when it came to uh, late model racing. Anyway... It was before they were the World of Outlaws. I don't remember what the late model series was called, if they were the Renegades back then or what they were. But anyway, they came to town for a big race at Raceway 7. And, and my local hero, Dick Barton, here uh, was leading the race. It was a 50-lap race, and he was leading it for a good part of it. And he and Steve Francis were just duking it out. One of the best late model races I've ever seen. And it came down to 8 or 10 laps to go. And Dick Barton's car broke a shock, and he had to pull off, and Steve Francis went on to win. But what a race that was, seeing our local guy, uh, you know, up there running door-to-door -door with Steve Francis. What a great race that was. So, so the, these two cars displayed together definitely take me back uh, to those days. This is a die-cast uh, custom I did of a friend of mine's uh, daughter uh, ran a stock car there at Raceway 7. Uh, so I did a die-cast of that. And then down here, uh, just a, a random driver modified that I that I like uh, Emod and then uh, they did a 50th anniversary Eldora late model and I thought it was neat enough that I did the uh, Emod to go with it uh, in custom decals and then we get down into Miller and Rusty Wallace primarily um, these are the four years that they did the Miller Lite Harley Davidson uh, paint schemes really like those put those together and then just a smattering of the Miller Light um, MGD over the years with uh, Bobby Ray Hall's MGD thrown in there. We get down into the haulers that go with them, uh, some of the dually and show trailer haulers, and then the various haulers that were done there. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of Miller uh, Brewing Company. And then we get down into the duallys that they did for Rusty through the years, different paint schemes, and then a couple of pit wagons and... Uh, drag cars there that uh, was that I think Larry Dixon ran those right yeah uh, yeah so now we're gonna get to the center section which is decidedly patriotic okay we'll start uh, over here this this top section of this case is all uh, armed forces uh, NASCAR paint schemes and tributes uh, the first row of five here uh, is from the 1991 Daytona 500 where Winston uh, stepped up and, and sponsored five teams uh, and had them run the, the Armed Forces paint schemes in support of uh, Desert Storm. 
Uh, so we've got the Coast Guard, Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines cars. These were all uh, model kits. They were never done in die cast. And then the same thing kind of happened at the Coke 600 uh, in 2001. So the Coast Guard, Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines were uh, uh, tributed represented I guess in uh, in that race uh, again in, in in five different special paint schemes in support of the troops and then just um, random uh, miscellaneous Coast Guard Air Force Army Navy and Marines uh, tribute paint schemes that uh, have been done since so this top section just kind of represents the five branches up on top there I've got a couple of Marines uh, mugs and then the Don Prudhomme Snake Army uh, dragster hauler from years ago and then we get down into um, Team Renzi uh, in, ran in the Bush series with Bobby Hamilton Jr. and a couple other drivers uh, various die casts that were done of their Marines uh, paint schemes uh, and then some Marines challenge coins a couple of more Marines cars uh, Hank Parker Jr. Uh, a while back ran that scheme and then Tony Stewart's uh, ESRG Marines uh, paint scheme. And then uh, some 164ths, uh, a couple of the Renzi cars that were never done in 124th, and then random other Marines uh, 164th cars that I've come across. Got a uh, gas pump here uh, for the Ricky Rudd Marines from 2000. Uh, 2000, yeah, I think it was. And then the Brookfields that go with it. I pretty much picked up everything I could find in this uh, Marines paint scheme. Really like it. Uh, both Brookfield sets, I displayed the silver one a little differently with an open trailer from GMP uh, rather than the full set. Uh, and then uh, here we'll get into some, um, I guess they call these sculptures. They're not really die cast that can't remember if it's the Bradbury Mint or Hamilton, but one of them uh, uh, does a lot of that kind of thing. So I've picked up some of the Marine stuff they've done over the years. We get up into this. Uh, this is a set that I think they're kind of still working on these little trucks in the Marines, various Marines tribute uh, uh, paint schemes. Uh, so as, as those come out, I've got a subscription and I get those as they come out. And then a little uh, 143rd Marines recruiting truck, and then a couple of uh, Renzi motorcycles. This uh, collection is kind of evolving as more of these trucks come out. And then they also did uh, these semi-trucks with the Marines uh, tribute on them, so I'm, I believe that's all of those that they're going to do. And then up here I've got a couple more uh, racing haulers, one custom Hamilton or uh, one custom Hank Parker that I did and then the Bobby uh, or not the Denny Hamlin uh, Marines hauler they did and then a custom Renzi hauler I did up there and then we get down here I've got some more military and Marines racing I've got the 118th of the Rudd uh, Marines car and then there's a model kit I did of uh, Mickey Thompson's Marines car from the, like the late 60s I guess and then some military drag racing, another Mickey Thompson, uh, Prudhomme, and then Shirley Muldowney's Blue Angels Dragster, and Angel, I've never been able to pronounce her last name, Savoy or whatever, that ran the drag bike in the Army uh, sponsorship. And down here, some more Renzi stuff, a couple of the high-rev hoods they did in the background, and then haulers that have been done, and then a couple of custom stock rods kind of things that I did in those uh, paint schemes. Some more uh, Marines memorabilia there and then some Marines trucks uh, that I believe Ertl did. Uh, most of these that I've accumulated. And then finally a couple more. I think these are Bradbury Mint, uh, a 118th Mustang and a 118th uh, F 150 and die cast that they did. So this whole section here is kind of military with a slant toward the Marines. Uh, yeah, I'm going to change it up here and come around to this little revolving display case. This was a collection that uh, my brother put together and gave to me as he was downsizing. Uh, these are all 
124th Action Sprint Cars, the original Action Sprint Cars that they did, very little detail on them, um, but various drivers that were done, in this case turns, and there's some neat drivers here, but these are all those original Action Sprint Cars that, uh, that were done in that original mold or whatever it, uh, whatever it was. Some Brad Doty there, back around to the to the front. Okay, continuing on over here. This is a a crew uh, uniform from Renzi, uh, signed by Bobby Hamilton Jr. that I picked up on eBay. And then some pictures here from a buddy's sprint car race team that I've helped out with over the years. And then we'll come on over here to this wall, which is primarily sprint car racing. This collection here is uh, about as complete a collection of sprint car die cast haulers as you're going to find. The bottom section there, I believe, are just about all of the Ertl haulers that were done. And then into the racing champions that were done. Again, I believe it's about all of them. And then GMP and a couple customs that I've done here at the top. So just about... Unless there's some out there I haven't found. Just about every sprint car hauler that's ever been done. My brother put most of this collection together again and gave it to me. And I really enjoy uh, owning that collection. And then we get into uh, some wall cases here. Got uh, Steve Kinzer represented here. Uh, some of his paint schemes throughout the year. And then above that his IROC car. And then we get down into some miscellaneous uh, 124th. Uh, we got a row there of uh, Freddie Raymer, and then the bottom some USAC style cars represented: Silver Crown, uh, Wingless Sprint, and Midget. Over here we get into 118th a little more. Uh, Steve Kinzer at the top with his NASCAR ride when he drove for Kenny Bernstein there for a year or two, and then into Brad Doty, and then. Uh, some other kind of nostalgic stuff that they did over the years. And then over here we get into Sammy Swindell. So we've got uh, four of his 118th cars, uh, as well as the Craftsman, I don't know if it was Craftsman back then, but the truck that he ran in NASCAR for a short time. And then we get down into some uh, event, event cars that were done and that kind of thing. Over here we've got... Uh, Dave Blaney is going to rear his head in my collection again, so his original NASCAR ride and along with uh, uh, his uh, 118th Vibrant car and then Dale Blaney, his brother, ran uh, for a team that he owned. And there's his uh, 118th car. And then we get into a uh, custom die cast I did on my buddy's race team there. Um, I think Bobby Allen there and then some Jack Hoddenshield. And then over here at the top, we've got a uh, collection of Danny Lasoski, various paint schemes in 124th in his IROC uh, car. And then down below, uh, these are all kind of local favorites. Uh, some of these are custom that I did of, of guys that just ran at the local level. Uh, and then at the bottom, the Blaney brothers there, uh, one Dale and two Dave Blaney cars. So this is kind of local heritage from where I grew up watching racing. I mentioned uh, you know how a lot of these cars take me back to particular moments and this Ed Lynch car here and, and this, uh, this was uh, Jared Larson uh, local champion that, that kind of dominated on uh, at Sharon Speedway, a track that I watched a lot of sprint car racing at. Anyway those two cars very much like the Steve Francis and Dick Barton race, these two cars just battled it out door-to-door uh, -door for a 30-lap feature one night and every time I look at these cars it takes me back to that night. What a great race that was. Probably the best sprint car race I've ever seen. Kind of continuing on here, I'm getting into some uh, some memorabilia from my musical experiences. I'm a musician. I've played in a few uh, local rock bands over the years, so some pictures and flyers and posters from that. Kind of a little bar. Not a bar, but a raised table here uh, so uh, when we're shooting pool I've 
always wanted my own pool table when I was young. My dad had one in the basement and really enjoyed shooting pool, so it was nice to move into a place where I had enough room to bring in a, a pool table. It's just a cheapie. I ordered it from, I don't know, online somewhere and had it shipped in and got it down. It's not a great table, but uh, but we enjoy having it down here for sure. Uh, let's see, got some beer caps there. Uh, I like to have a nice sitting area in the man cave for watching movies and whatnot, so kind of that's what's over here. Uh, got my granddaughter there. A uh, little uh, tribute to my service in the Marine Corps there that my dad and I put together after I got out, a poster from one of the shows that we did, and some pictures from my time as a military musician. Um, and I kind of skip over here to this corner. This is kind of Mustang Corner here. Um, let's go through this real quick. Got a picture of my wife there from a motorcycle trip that we did, uh, a poem that my dad wrote uh, way, way back uh, that I've held on to, and then a little cluster of pictures of my son. But the rest of this corner is pretty much all about the Mustang. I'm a big Mustang fan. I've dreamed of owning a Mustang my whole life, and finally, here not long ago, I pulled the trigger and bought one. Uh, and this is just a collection of Mustang that I've put together, some 143rds at the top, and then a 164th kind of uh, retrospective of the Mustang over the years, starting with the original uh, concept cars, and then just a smattering of Mustangs uh, evolving over the years through the different generations. Um, starting in the second generation there with the Mustang 2 Cobra. I'll tell you what, finding one of these little Gia, Mustang Gia, Gia, whatever those were called, from the mid to late 70s, that's tough to find those guys. Uh, that's the only one I've been able to find that was at all affordable. And we get into the Fox bodies and then the, the fourth generation there and then evolving into the fifth and then finally the sixth generation the s550 that we're on now neat little ford sign that my sister-in-law bought me for christmas this year it lights up uh, kind of flashes and whatnot some more uh mustang stuff from over the years i absolutely love this mickey thompson set that uh what eastwood Earl did uh trailer set uh, and then over here, some 118th Mustangs that I like, and then a 124th retrospective of all the body styles and generations of Mustangs through the years. Some of these are model kits. Most of them are die cast. The two in the center are model kits there that I just finished this winter, the 77 Mustang II and the 90 Fox Body. Those were model kits that, uh, that I put together this winter. Okay, hey, we're making progress here. Uh, I won't touch on every little thing. Uh, this poster here is, uh, I think this was a dealer promo poster that we spotted online, and my wife looked and looked and looked and finally dug one up in decent shape, and we framed it here, but that's uh, pretty much the Mustang that we bought. We bought a 2016 Mustang GT California Special in the triple yellow, triple coat yellow, whatever they're calling it, so that's pretty much our car absolutely love that that poster uh, over here um, got a Ryan Blaney mobile that my wife found for me on eBay kind of like that uh, and then here I've got a case of 164th um, had a lot of 164th stuff that uh, that I liked so I bought this case to kind of display that and again it's kind of a hodgepodge Start at the bottom here. One of my first cars growing up was a 1980 Chevy El Camino. So i uh, kind of in love with the El Camino, so I've got a couple of rows of those. And then we get into just a smattering of dirt, race cars, modified Z-Mods, into late models. Got uh, Jeff Gordon's Sprint car there, and then a kind of a lackluster replica of a super modified there that Hot Wheels has done. And then just some nostalgic older uh, uh, NASCARs from over the years, starting with Mario Andretti's Daytona 500 win there. And then just miscellaneous cars that, that I like here. Get into some Earnhardt uh, early and more recent, Junior. And then some more Junior leading into some Senior. And then some event cars I've accumulated from different tracks I've visited. 
uh, a few more Mustangs uh, kind of overflow there and then here's a row of Ryan Blaney's first couple of years in NASCAR with the Wood Brothers just chronologically all the paint schemes in 164th got his first win there Pocono raced version kind of like that car and then uh, his character in the Cars movie there uh, Ryan right turn Laney or whatever it was uh, his bush car uh, and then some other uh, filler stuff here this is just kind of reserving room for uh, more Blaney cars as his career progresses up here is just a row of stock rods um, and then we get into some overflow from the patriotic paint schemes and military paint schemes and then finally uh, some stuff from the Matchbox Team Convoy set that I have on display in another case and then hoods and whatnot that have come from some of those cars that I've added this trombone lamp my wife spotted in an antique shop shortly after we moved and bought for me I think that's a neat little addition down here since I'm a trombone player this is a 143rd case that holds some of the team convoy sets that uh, that they did I've always liked those and then I get into 143rd cars here just various drivers and then Here's the complete set of the Legends of Racing that, I don't remember what company did these, cheap little plastic black window Legends of NASCAR Racing uh, in 143rd. And then just a smattering of other 143rd historicals that I've added to it. Uh, kind of continuing that historical theme, some Fireball Roberts haulers there. Neat old Mr. Gasket hauler that I picked up and some more Fireball Roberts stuff there. And then got an old Shelby here that I spotted, really liked it, and put it on a trailer behind an old Ford truck. And then another old Chevy truck that I found that I liked. This is my Milk and Cookies collection. Uh, just a weird little collection that I like. I love these paint schemes with the milk kind of splashing up the side of the car. Uh, so picked up all the haulers there. You'll probably recognize Junior's Daytona, Oreo and Nilla, and then... Terry Labonte did the Got Milk scheme, and I thought those all went together real nice with their cars, and then I did some matching stock rides with the decals there. just kind of like that collection. Down here is a model kit that I built of an old uh, speedboat and a truck. Really uh, enjoyed building that, so that's on display there. Here we get into a 118th collection of muscle cars that my brother put together and gave to me when he was downsizing. Really like these, uh, these 118th muscle cars, so just kind of a display of those all the way up through the Camaro and Mustang at the top there now we get into some stock rods a couple of 118 there's Dale Blaney again and then a matching Jerry Nadu I think was driving that uh, GTO army kind of like that and some 124th stock rods uh, this case is kind of a history of NASCAR racing that I've put together I really kind of dig these older cars so this is a collection I'll probably continue to tweak as we go. That model kit I've started on is going to end up in this case, but starts out as early as I could find with some Fireball Roberts there, Lee Petty. Um, I don't remember all these drivers. I think that's uh, is that Brian France or I don't know, one of the original France uh, drivers going through Ralph Earnhardt there and Ned Jarrett, more Petty, more Mario Andretti, Buddy Baker, and the Allison family, some Earnhardt, Cale Yarborough. So just kind of an evolution of, uh, of racing over the years, all the way up through the more, uh, more modern of uh, today. So just a neat collection, continuing to tinker with that. So I think that about wraps up this tour of the man cave. Hope you enjoyed the diecast collection and we'll uh, look forward to doing some more videos here uh, in the future.